Welcome to the Seven Figure Builder Show. My name is Julie Baranek, founder of Seven Figure Builder, where we help high achieving CEOs work smarter, not harder, with gorgeous insights to scale to seven figures and beyond. And I'm here today with my friend, Faith Ann Basor. Hey, Faith Ann. Hi, Julie. How are you? I am absolutely wonderful. I'm thrilled to have you on today. Thank you for letting me come on and, and talk to you. I appreciate yeah, the opportunity. Absolutely. So where in the world are you? We'll start there. Okay, so I am in a little suburb of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, called Moore, and we serve the Oklahoma City metro area, but I've lived in Oklahoma City, or Moore, most of my life. We're about seven miles south of downtown Oklahoma City. Nice. That's a gorgeous mm -hmm. area. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I mean, and it's funny because um, people from out of state, they're always uh, telling me, well, I could never live in Oklahoma because of tornadoes. And Tornadoes don't scare me, so I'm in the perfect place. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I yeah. used to live in Wisconsin, and we used to have them a lot, so I remember the sirens, but yeah, yeah. It's, you get used to it, right? It's mm -hmm. part of life. Yeah. So for people that haven't had the pleasure to meet you yet, can you tell us just a little bit about what you do with your business? Sure. So we own, my husband and I own Window Cleaning Plus. So homeowners hire us to bring nature into focus through professional window cleaning and business owners hire us to heighten and brighten their curb appeal through regular window cleaning. So we maintain, we get the windows looking their absolute best. And then for businesses, we maintain them by coming out either monthly or quarterly so that um, people know people know that they're walking into a high-end business because that curb appeal is so important. And then for homeowners, um, the, the main a benefit that we offer homeowners is just we're doing something that many of them don't want to do, don't have the time to do, or physically can't do. So bring yeah. nature into focus through the window cleaning. That's awesome. And that makes such a huge difference, like you said, about the curb appeal of your business and in your home, just needing to do that regularly, you know, multiple times right. a year, ideally. I know I don't get to it quite that often. As I, <laughs> I wish we were a little closer to me because I would have you help me. Yeah. But. It's hugely important. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what got you into this field? I know you've had quite a journey to get here. Yeah. Um, about nine years ago, coming up in June, my husband uh, was mowing lawns. He had made a decision to quit his, jo his corporate job. And he had been mowing lawns on the side off and on throughout the years. And he just took the plunge. He said, I can't take another day where he was at. Uh, he made a decision in April to quit. He was going to mow lawns full time. Meanwhile, my brother had started a window cleaning route and he was using my son who was homeschooled at the time. He was 14 and my niece who was also homeschooled. She was also 14. He was using them part time and he was taking them um, all over the metro and he got calls to do high rise work. Wow. And so he thought, well, I can't manage both. I don't even have helpers that can drive. He came to us. He came over to our living room and said, hey, would you like to buy our route? And we said, absolutely, without any, hardly any thought. It was just because my husband had um, previously taken my son and my niece out on a, on a day when my brother couldn't be there. And he came home that day and he said, they go into a shop and come out with more money and they're not dirty in less time than it takes me to mow one yard. And he wow. said, this is a really cool business your brother has. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I, I didn't even know window cleaning was a thing. And then that was early April. And by J June, we bought the route. Wow. <laughs> and we just took it and, uh, you know, really put everything we have into it. My husband was very uh, hardworking and willing to learn how to, how to window clean. And then uh, when I started becoming more involved, I, I kind of wanted to grow the business and wanted to seek out ways that I could uh, make, make more of an impact, you know, help more people and be more uh, financially um, stable in our, in our own family by serving the people around me. So um, a lot of networking and a lot of learning. And here we are. That's Nine awesome. years later. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So how did the networking help you? Like, what did that look like for you in your business? So networking is a long-term goal, long-term game. And it, and I didn't realize that it would be a long-term game until it just a, a year into it started 
becoming re- known by the people that I was around all the time as the window cleaner. Oh, I know a girl. I know a girl. Yeah. And, and if I would have set out from day one networking to say, okay, this meeting has to generate me eight leads. And this meeting, if I would have set out with that way of thinking, I would have become very frustrated very easily. But I didn't, because I didn't know what I didn't know. I just didn't know. I was like, well, these people seem like really awesome business owners and I can meet with them weekly and I can learn so much from them and they can, and I, maybe I can help them. Um, and it just turned into a real relationship building opportunity. And then wouldn't you know, like somebody now in a Facebook group will say, I need a window cleaner and I'm tagged multiple times. And, and, you know, that was never the goal, but here I am. So um, I, I really like uh, telling people just things I've learned about networking over the years so that they can, you know, kind of know right away how to make the best out of these um, meetings and opportunities. So, because time is valuable for everybody. And so I, I like to do that. Absolutely. And I think that's key that you mentioned that you don't go into the conversation with a predetermined outcome, right? Like you're not there to get their number to, you know, to get a deal. You're there to build a relationship. And so therefore down the road, it becomes way more than you ever thought it would be. Right. You you go into the conversation with curiosity. Mm -hmm. That that's such a huge uh, element. When I figured that out, I'm curious about you. And I'm curious if maybe I have something for you. And there's just little, little things you can do to make yourself a little bit more to prompt that curiosity in other people. And then to, to be, I've heard this phrase, be interested, not interesting because being interesting is kind of hard. That's a lot of pressure, but if you're interested, then that works a lot better for the people because they like to feel heard and seen if you're interested uh, they're going to remember you. So one thing that, you know, I tell people, do not walk into a, like a chamber event or any event and start passing out your cards, just going from person, from group to group, to group, to group, to group. And it's so sad when people do that. Cause I'm just like, Oh, you're just, <laughs> you're, you're just shooting yourself in the foot by doing that. You know, yeah. find out what is what's happening with the people that you want to be around and really try to build a relationship with them. And then follow up with them. And when you do follow up with them, it make it very easy for them to meet with you. So don't just, don't make them do all the work, make it easy by saying, here's some time. These are three times. And I get, I get this from um, a salesperson. Her name's Nikki Roush. And she teaches this instead of making, instead of saying, I'd love to have coffee with you someday. Now the person who reads that has to come up with the time, the day, the place, Mm -hmm. like all the work is for them. But if you're wanting, if you're initiating the meeting, then you make it very easy for them. So if someone sends me an email and says, I would love to learn more about your business, I'm available on Monday, anytime between nine and 11 or Tuesday after three, that then I can, I can say, okay, well, all I have to know is one, do I want to meet with this person? And if I do, am I free on Monday from nine to anytime between nine and 11? And that just makes things so much easier uh, to get, to get your foot in the door you know, try to help people. Like when you, when you are going to meet somebody after you first met them at an event, how can I help you? And it it might not always be, excuse me, just bringing you business. My personally, you know, maybe I can't, I don't have dollars to give you, but do I have people that I can introduce you to? And then, and because we, we work with realtors and I, would get overwhelmed. Like I know all these realtors, but you know, if I don't know, I'm going to, I can't buy and sell a house every year, you know, but then like, well, but there's ways I can help realtors beyond just giving them a referral. I can sponsor their open houses. I can share their stuff. And so one thing I do often is, you know, how realtors will share their listings a lot Mm -hmm. on Facebook. Well, instead of just like, I'll go in and I'll look at every single picture and then I'll comment on a picture like, mm. oh, this is a chandelier, my goodness. And that helps, you know, comments and it shows yeah. that I'm actually looking. There's little things like that that you can do to help. You may think that you can't help somebody if you don't have a lot of money, but there are other ways that you can help people and giving first builds the relationship. A hundred percent. And, you know, 
people don't remember what you say, but they remember how you make them feel. Right. And when you make it in addition to feeling comfortable talking with you, but you make it easy to connect with you, that will then trigger in their head that it will be easy to work with you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And as you're, I like your tips of, you know, just commenting on their, you know, for realtor, for example, commenting on their pictures or sharing the posting, right? Like you can help them get the word out and that's free to you. You're not referring them, you know, buying their house necessarily, but it expands their reach. Mm -hmm. And each of those little items gets you back in their memory and puts you in front of their face of like, oh yeah, that's right. Faith and I need, you know, and then connect to another thought. So I think that's really awesome. Yeah. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, learning about other people, you really don't realize what you don't know until you actually start talking to people and that they're so interesting. And they, they, and you learn that, you know, you don't need to be intimidated as well Mm -hmm. because everyone's just walking around with one big ball of fear (laughs) just as much as anybody else and fear, you know, I'm, I've been telling myself this a lot lately, you know, fear is, is the thief of curiosity. Mm -hmm. If I'm so fearful, I can't be curious. If I'm not curious, I can't learn. And if I can't learn, I can't know. And if I can't know, I can't grow. So I have to, you have to find a way to, to say there's what I'm after. The knowledge that I'm after is really more important than any fear that I have. So, so get out there and people, um, as long as you're genuine, people are pretty forgiving and, and, and gracious. Yeah. And I think that's key too, is being genuine and, having that come through in your communication. It's not like I want to ask you a question to then dig and get something else out. So the more you can just be authentic and genuine, you know, people respond to that. They want to be around people that are like that. So I think that's really cool. Yeah. So you've been in business for nine years. How did you guys fare through COVID? How did that impact your business? We were hit pretty hard when COVID came around. There was a weekend of 2020 and we, it was a emails from hell is what we called it. So what happened around that time when my husband and I would be out in the route cleaning the windows is we would have monthly accounts. And so we're in North Oklahoma City and this would happen quite often. It's Friday afternoon and say, well, we have this, this, this and to do, you know, we can, we can do it now or we can do it next week. As long as we get a four or five day leeway, they don't, the business owners aren't that particular so we were having that conversation, but all, all the while, these emails had been coming to me all day, cancel service, cancel service, cancel service, cancel service. And so Dave's like, what do you think about men's warehouse? I said, Dave, if my husband, if we don't do this today, it probably won't be there for us to do next week. It, it was just awful. <laughs> and then, so, and then I expected um, for all of our residential people to follow suit. I was waiting for them to say, cancel service, cancel service, cancel service. And not one of them did. And it was the, um, it was the weirdest thing. It it was just, it was crazy. Like all of our business owners were trying to cut costs because they weren't either, they weren't allowed to be open or, you know, that people weren't coming in the door and our residential people were uh, home. Yeah. And guess what they're looking at all day. (laughs) They're looking out the window. They're like, Hey, uh, (laughs) Yeah. Can you be here on Tuesday? And I'm like, what? Tuesday? You know, I'm expecting this is like, oh, don't come in. You know, I might die. So um, we even, even, and that was a real blessing that the residential people kept us on their schedules. But, but with the commercial side, um, we were, we were, my husband and I were both uh, afraid, but we were afraid of different things. So my husband at first was afraid that he was going to die. Like he was going to get COVID. I was afraid we were going to lose a business. I didn't care anything about if I got, I'm just, for some reason, I just wasn't afraid of the disease itself. And he wasn't worried about the business. He was, so we were, it was just, it was really hard, um, hard to, to endure because we weren't afraid of the same things. So the priorities were different. You know, I'm thinking, okay, well, if we can't, what could we do instead if we can't, like, how can we still, you know, be in their house or still be in their business? And, um, you know, he was like, well, we need to find out, we need to watch the news. No, no, we don't need to watch the news. 
Like, I don't want Washington, D.C. telling me what I can and can't do. And, and thankfully, he it was only about a two week period where he was really afraid. And then um, he and we're both Christians. And I think, you know, he God uh, let him have some peace. And uh, then so that was around uh, April and May. And so then um, I sought out a, a business coach because I just was just needed some like somebody to help me through this with Danielle Bailey here locally. She and she, what she did is she made me write down everything that I had accomplished and read it every day. Wow. For months. She's like, hey, did you read your list? And I was like, no. She's like, well, <laughs> it's going to stay on your to do list then until you start reading it. And just just writing down everything that I had, had accomplished was um, really helpful because as business owners, we kind of get lost in the day to day and we don't give ourselves enough credit for what we have accomplished. And that was that was uh, what was able to say, OK, well, I, if I've already done all this, you know, I think we can make it through. And, and we did. I mean, and we had to, you know, really think about, OK, now that all this commercial stuff is gone when it comes back, do we want it? Like it, it was a real eye opener, like to tell us, you know, your business can pivot and really focus on a completely different audience than it used to. Now, it's not that we don't want the commercial clients, but we're, we're, we learned that the uh, residential people, like a, a, if a pandemic doesn't stop you, that's pretty solid. That's, yeah. That's kind of who you want to be serving. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And a lot of that probably comes back to the relationship, right? Like with the corporate account, it's easier for them to cut ties because they're looking at overhead and, and their own relationships that they want to salvage of their employees. So if it's mm -hmm. between their employees or the windows, okay, we'll cut the windows. But for the residential, you know, like you mentioned, they're home looking out their windows every single day. And they also know you on a personal level. So right. it's more of that you know, connection, like, okay, well, we don't want them to suffer. <laughs> you know, like, right. it, Can I just tell you one quick thing yeah, about of one of our, res our commercial people. So we have a barbecue, local barbecue joint that we serve. She is, and we have such a great relationship with the general manager at this barbecue place. And they, you know, they weren't even allowed to have people inside for months. They couldn't have people inside. And so I'm in you know, early on, I'm like, Hey, Marianne, you know what? what do you want to do? You want us to do outside only? Cause I was ready for kind of adjustment. Right. She's like, Nope, just keep coming. And it was such a blessing. And so later she told me, she said, well, my reasoning was if, if all of you guys go out of business during COVID, when things come back, I'm not going to have anybody to hire. And I, you know, I got good people doing good work for me. Yeah. So I, so I really appreciated that about her. She was, she wasn't just thinking about next week, next month. She was like, no, long-term, um, I need to keep these people in business. And we are so grateful. For, and we we plug her everywhere we go because we're just so grateful for her, for Rudy's Barbecue doing that and really um, treating us, you know, like family uh, when they didn't have to. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. And fear, like you mentioned, can be so debilitating both on a personal yes. end business level if you let it you know we hear and think about mindset so often but like it just can be uh, so captivating and really mm -hmm. impact everything in your life I know we went through similar things with COVID and my husband is residential construction and he saw the right. same thing with his business where people were home they're like well no I want you to paint I want <laughs> you to right. you know keep doing the things you're doing and we had to be careful on a health basis because it's like retirement communities. So you want to be oh. conscientious of them and their health. And, right. you know, I ended up way sicker with COVID and hospitalized and came home on oh, oxygen, wow. and like really freaking sick. And so it, it's, you know, it's, there's a lot of fear involved with that when you come out and it's like, I don't want to do that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can For definitely sure. resonate on both levels of both your struggles and your husband's. It's, it's interesting how you, you know, shift your perspective and eventually you get to the point you're like, I can't live my life in fear. Right. Right. So. Yeah. And I'm, so, I'm really thankful, you know, that yeah. God uh, saw us through this and gave my husband some peace and gave me some peace. Um, and, you know, uh, 
there were, we took advantage of some of the programs, the funding that, that was really helpful too. And, 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 and the way they did those loans, uh, mm-hmm. where you went to the bank, you know, that was really helpful. Like, cause you just got your money right away and, and it wasn't, you weren't bogged down in red tape. So we, we took advantage of, of what we could for right. that, whatever we qualified for. Um, and we kept, we kept all our people, uh, working. Um, my son was working for us and he, during, it was during that summer of 2020 that he decided to just move on to something different. And so it was a nice way to transition him out and, uh, still continue, but we, it, it was something, man, it was really something. Yeah. No. And your faith is critical in getting through this. I mean, it's, no matter what tough time you're going through when you can come back to your faith and I'm the same, you know, it just mm-hmm. is everything. Right. So you've been through a lot. You've accomplished tons with your business. How do you define success? What does that look like for you? How do I define success? I think I, I define success um, as having, having a service that pe- that people find valuable that we are able to provide and, you know, able to provide seems like a real simple thing, but it's not a simple thing. Like just because you have a service doesn't mean you're able to provide. And when I say able to provide, I mean, we're there, we show up when we say we're going to show up with the right tools and our employees are happy. The clients are happy. We have good follow-up systems like able to provide is a, you know, success that, we are able to do that right now. And I'm grateful and happy that we are able to provide window cleaning for our clients and we're able to provide um, our our employees sustainable work that is not seasonal. So that's really, really nice. Like that's what the commercial does for us. It, it keeps them working year round, mm-hmm. keeps that money coming in year round. Awesome. And how do you build that loyalty with your clients? Like, do you have systems in place that you know, connect with them? What does that look like for you? Yeah. So we have a monthly newsletter that we go out that goes out and it's just a general, this is what's new. Um, And what I've done through my networking um, activities is um, I will highlight one professional and generally it's a home services professional that makes sense to include. Um, Every month I will say, I will include like a headshot and a, and a little blurb about their business and I'll say, let me know if you'd like me to connect you with whoever, the roofer or the uh, insurance or whatever. And that way I know, I know if they're asking, then I know they're, then there's an opportunity to connect. If I just put the info out, I'm not as likely to know if they want the information. But if I say, hey, let me know if you would like to be connected. So we're in there. We do send the monthly emails out and then we In November, we generated a um, plus program. So that is a loyalty program for quarterly window cleaning. So we took our existing clients and we said, hey, what if we could offer you quarterly window cleaning that you knew, you knew every three months we would be out and here are some perks. And then here's a rain guarantee for you. So you don't have to worry about if it rains, we'll come out at no charge and fix the windows that are affected. And uh, we've been gradually building that out, you know, having two or three people per month uh, sign up for that. We had several sign up at the beginning in November when we offered it, and then we're gradually having people. And so I'm, I'm always thinking about, well, what what more can I do? What more can we offer people? So we're, we're working on the quarterly, and then I'm thinking about maybe offering uh, for people who maybe can't do quarterly twice a year, but it's the same kind of idea. It's that you're committing to two cleanings in a year. Like right. that that's the loyalty part of it. I I'm going to give you a discount, but you have to commit to two cleanings or I give you a discount, you get four cleanings. One more thing we started doing recently is we're doing some YouTube videos. So you can find us on YouTube at Window Cleaning Plus Inc. I think it's Window Cleaning Plus Inc. Mm, might be Window Cleaning Plus OKC Inc, but uh that we've been doing videos every month of just a compilation of what we what we do and those are fun for people to uh, see that's awesome and then you're a youtube star 
<laughs> Hardly, but it, we're at least on YouTube. Yeah. So. No, and I think that's incredible to be so service oriented. Like, you know, the best way to serve your clients is how they need you to serve them. So you can ask them and get their input of like, you know, the more you, the more value you can bring to them, the more right. they treasure the, what you're doing, right? Even a commodity right. of like cleaning windows, which is awesome and we all need it, but you can really make that connection with people that way. Yeah. And what I like too, is I, I'm trying through these monthly newsletters. I'm, what I'm trying to do is say to my clients, I know people. Mm -hmm. like, that's another way I'm bringing value to you. If you need something besides window cleaning, let me know, like ask me if I know a roofer or if I know a carpet cleaner, because I, I know good people. I'm I'm not going to go to Yellow Pages or Google. I mean, I actually know people very well in the home services industry. And I want to connect you with the people that I know, because I, I stand behind them, just like I stand behind my work. Yeah, that's awesome. So what does the year ahead look for you? What, what is the biggest, you know, life-changing goal or what do you have coming this year? Um, my goal this year is to uh, be less involved in scheduling. Uh, one thing that happened last year that I was so thankful for is that I was finally off of the route. And last year we were able to have my husband off of the route sometimes. So there are days where it's just our crew that go out without me or him. That's a huge mm -hmm. for us this year. I'm looking to set, to see about not having to schedule because if I'm not in down in the weeds, then I can be thinking of the big picture things like, and selling, I, I would like to be doing more sales for, for the company. Awesome. So that's a big goal of mine. Awesome. Well, for people that are listening and want to find you, where can they find you online? Um, I am uh, our website is windowcleaningplusokc.com. And then Facebook, it's my name, Faith Ann Basor. Uh, you can send me a friend request or uh, our business page is Window Cleaning Plus OKC. Awesome. And we'll have all the links down below so people can come click through and come check you out. And yeah. if you had the attention of the whole world for five minutes, what would you tell them? Oh, um, I would tell them to... Uh, I would say you need a savior and Christ is the savior and uh, he's, he has forgiven your sins and that's, that's a huge blessing. That's awesome. I echo that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Faith Ann. I appreciate you being on today. And if you found value in this episode, please do share it. Please do check out Faith Ann and all the awesome stuff they're doing with their business. And um, yeah, that's how people find us too, is by sharing and subscribing. And you can find me at sevenfigurebuilder.com. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.